welcome to Nick Grit. My name is Cody Lee and I might have a small um, turtle problem. I don't know if it's so much as a problem as just a uh, factor that I've been making far too many of them and making a lot of fruit themed turtles as well. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make these essentially really cute base turtle templates. As always, there will be a printable PDF down below, which you can get for free for the very first week off of our Ravelry. After that, it'll be $3. So links down below. It uh, pays off to be subscribed and be notified when you get those uh, new tutorials because almost all of my tutorials come with a free link to my uh, PDF pattern on Ravelry. There's also going to be a Dropbox link for how to make this cute little visor to turn your little turtle into the Ninja Turtles. I show a video on how to use your Cricut to cut felt. So if you're interested in that, again, I will link that down below, but I cut all of the felt little visors to make these cute little Ninja Turtles off of the same base design. So if you're interested in that, Dropbox link is down below and you can get that there. I'm also making kits. So there will be a kit which you can order either a Ninja Turtle or just a plain turtle, well, Ninja Turtle, because I'm gonna be adding some of these little visors that you can add and have all the colors that you need to make any one of these in the kit or just any of the basics for that. I know this is a really long-winded intro. Future editing Cody will have already timestamped where the video uh, pattern starts. I also made this cute little watermelon. He's got a little rind. I'm going to be doing a tutorial on him. I am also going to be doing a tutorial on how to do this little lime and lemon turtle. I'm also going to be doing a cute little whale version as well. I'm going to be doing all the turtles and all the whales and trying to intersperse every once in a while, probably closer to fall. I'm going to show you how I made this super duper adorable little pumpkin whale. It's very close to my actual pumpkin. So if you already know how I make that, it's fairly close to that, this strawberry turtle. So if you are interested in, again, a whale version of this, there is a nice little whale version that I just uploaded. It's the one right before this one. So if you're interested in that, I also have a sushi one. There will not be a tutorial on that. It's just another color variation, which I think is super duper adorable on the belly. And also a uh, blueberry turtle, which I think is super duper adorable. I just love how I did the eyes and I think it's super cute. I'm also gonna be selling the physical items on these on my Etsy, but give me some time. Links for my Etsy shop are down below. You can get the pattern from there if you wanna support the channel over there. All proceeds from my Etsy are actually going towards a new MacBook. So I am very excited about that. Let's go ahead and get started. So for this project, you will need some worsted weight yarn or size four yarn. I am using very little of this antique beige. I am using this all is I love this cotton, which is a uh, yarn bee or Hobby Lobby specific yarn. If you don't want that, you can just make sure that you try to get the same kind of brand generally. I'm using different colors because I wanted to see what it looked like in this turquoise color and this bright citrus color. You need less than an ounce of each of these colors. I could easily make between two and three uh, turtles with at least this yarn here and probably more with this belly quite honestly if I use this as just the belly and you're making a lot of turtles for whatever reason. So uh, you will also need some darning needles. Knowing me I, I lose mine all the time so probably a couple. Uh, at least an ounce of polyester fiber fill. Again, this is this really nice cotton fiber fill that I got from Hobby Lobby and I'm really liking it. It stuffs a lot better and I'm less frustrated when I'm stuffing. You will also need some 12 millimeter eyes. I am using these really cheap ones that I got off Amazon. You can tell that there's little parts, but you can easily just get them in bulk from wherever, Wish, Amazon, whatever you need to do. I am also using a 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. This is my Furls crochet hook. Advertiser links down below if you're interested in a Furls crochet hook. Your girl can hook you up with some coupon codes down below. So I'm gonna be using this, it's my favorite, but if you have just like a plain old cheap, normal Susan Bates or Boyles, that will work just fine as well. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Thank you. 
All right, so we just posted the little pattern there and we are basically gonna be working on the shell starting from the top and going down. And how I make the shell is we're gonna create a slip knot. We're gonna make a magic ring. And if you're familiar with my magic rings, I don't do a traditional one. I do a chain two, so one, two, and then I skip the first chain for my hook and I go into the second one or the very first chain that you created and in this we're going to treat this as our magic ring and we're going to put six single crochet so one two three four five and six tighten that up your holes gonna probably loosen up a little bit but it's all right and here we're essentially going to be creating um, a circle by staggering our increases and adding six stitches every single round evenly across it so what I mean by that and you'll have seen the chart posted on there as well is for this next round we're going to increase every single stitch because there's only six stitches so increase 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 one, two, three, four, five, six, yes. So that would get us up to 12 stitches. But then once we're at 12 stitches, in order to add six stitches, we're going to single crochet one, increase, single crochet one, increase. And I'm gonna show you how I do it every single round. But essentially when I stagger my increases, I make it so that all of my increases don't line up with one another. And I'll show you what that looks like here. So increase every single stitch on row two. second stitch we're putting two stitches inside every single one one two in that same st third stitch one two and then I think this is the last one one two actually it might not be the last one I think we may have one more after this so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven eight. we have one more stitch that we need to increase so one and two so now that was row two and we just increased every single stitch we're gonna hold our tail i'm gonna actually pull my tail through that final stitch and use that as a stitch marker so now we have 12 stitches and like i said in order to increase from 12 up to 18 we're going to single crochet one and then do our increase single crochet one and then increase all the way around. We're on the last increase and I'm going to pull my yarn out a little bit out of Henrietta over here and we're going to take our tail pull that out of where it was and pull it forward. That was row three and now on row four we would usually single crochet one two increase one two increase to go from 18 up to 24 however as i mentioned before i stagger my increases so that they don't line up on top of each other that way they're kind of all randomly jumbled and it's harder to see your increases and it makes it a bit more round I explain this in my stacked versus staggering video. Again, I will have links for an entire playlist on all of this down below, but instead I do something a little bit different. I single crochet one, increase single crochet one. This offsets it and makes it look a bit more round and a bit more polished. You don't have to do it if you don't want to do it this way, but we're going from 18 stitches up to 24 and we're going to single crochet one, increase single crochet one, single crochet one, increase, single crochet one, all the way around. This is our last repetition, doing our last increase right there. Oop, losing our hook. There we go. At least losing our stitch. And now we're again gonna move our tail forward. We just went up to 24 stitches and now that we're at 24 stitches, we want to get to 30. So in order to get to 30, we are going to single crochet one, two, three, 
and then increase on that fourth stitch. This gets us from 24 up to 30. One, two, three, four. And I'm sorry if you hear cars in the background, they are very noisy and I cannot find a time where it's not just happening constantly. Two, three, four, five, and all the way until you get to your marker. Now we just finished our last increase for that row. We are going to now go from 30 up to 36. This is our final increase round. So we are going to, again, stagger. I don't know why all this polyfills everywhere probably has, I literally stored on this desk. Um, we are going to stagger our stitches again. We are going to, instead of single crochet four and increase, we are going to single crochet one and two and then increase that stitch and then one, two. One more time, one, two, increase, one, two. And if you look at it, it still does have four stitches between each of our increases. Or we have an increase right here, and we have an increase right there with four stitches in the middle. So we still have the same number of stitches between our increases. It just staggers it, and I think it makes it look a little bit more round than hexagonal, which is what can happen a lot with your amigurumi. I'm going to finish this up, and then I will say what we do next. All right, so now we have 36 stitches on our little top of our shell here. It's pretty rounded given that we staggered our increases, and I like that. I've moved my tail forward. And what we're gonna do from here on out is we're just gonna single crochet around for eight rounds. I'll show you how I make a seamless edge on my turtle shell, which is actually a method that I've used in some other amigurumi as well, but I really like it. So I will be right back as soon as I get eight rounds done maintaining those 36 stitches be right back all right so i don't know where my brain glitched out when i said eight rounds earlier but for round seven through eleven so for five rounds you single crochet around so one two three four five i've already done my five rounds i actually did eight and then forgot i'm like wow this is way too way too big way too long this is very much not eight rounds around so i'm sorry about that and i glitched out i already put it in the text though so hopefully you saw that before doing eight rounds all right so here we are on our last stitch of round five and i'm going to actually pull that all the way through after cutting it here i'm going to do a seamless edge essentially it's my favorite thing to do lately i don't know why you take your darning needle you put your tail onto said darning needle and here you're going to want to pay attention to your stitches so here you've got your one that you just slip stitched off of the one that's right in front of it and then the one after that so here's what we're going to do we're essentially creating a faux stitch over this stitch and how we do that is we skip this stitch that we're kind of making a fake stitch over and we go over and into the next one from the front of the thing into the center and into the back so we pull that through and you can see that's the first leg of your v of the stitch kind of tug it a little bit so it's the same size as your other stitches and then you take your darning needle and you go into the center of your stitch i have another video on that as well you go through the center of the stitch at the v of your original where you just slip stitched off and what i like to do is i like to go through the back rungs of all of my little back stitches that are there because I did front loop only, like I said in the uh, pattern screenshot. I go through front loop only, and because I do that, I like to get my nice big back loops here, and I'll run that right through there. And here, I don't pull so tight, but here you can see that that stitch still is just a little bit too big. You kind of tug it until it looks like how you want, and that is how you do a seamless little piece there and trust me that actually winds up mattering 
We're gonna pull all of our tails and I'm actually gonna just kind of chop those off so they're out of the way. You could just like tuck it right in and have it not matter, but to make it easier for people to see, I'm going to just chop them off. So here we're gonna work on the belly and how we're going to do that is we're gonna go back and try to find our seam right there because that's where it joins over. And so from here, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put your hook through. You can attach really anywhere, but this is how I find to make it the most seamless. I like to find it and put my hook through the back loop directly over before, like where they join. You'll see that there's some back loops over here and the back loops over here. I like to put my hook through both of them. Let me see if I can show this properly. Because here it joins up like this and then they kind of go together. But if I put my hook through both of those loops, it kind of marries them into one loop that's seamless all the way around, if that makes sense. You'll see what I mean when I go rebound around. So here, you're gonna wanna take your tummy color. I actually had a bunch of yarn barf and just was really impatient and just chopped it off because I'll just use it for another project at some point. But anyway, I'm going to attach my yarn just by kind of slip stitching through both of those loops. Chain one, go back inside both said loops and single crochet one. Ignore that chain one, it's just to help us get started. And we're going to single crochet across all of these stitches, essentially the back loops of row 10. And we're gonna get all 36 of these back loops up and at them over here. There's a little cat decided to cuddle me while we were doing the base of this and uh, it shows. So we're gonna keep single crocheting around and around until we get back to the base and then I will do more talking then. I'm probably just gonna do a little fast forward after a little bit because honestly you're just gonna keep going around and around and around until you get back to here. Be right back. Right, so now you have this kind of like raised edge. Don't worry, it will like fold over once everything's said and done. I just kind of like it raised for right now to make it work. So what I like to do is for here, I like to just kind of swoop into this first stitch, not the slip stitch, just the first single crochet there. I tighten it as much as I can and just do a single crochet on that first stitch. That way it kind of just looks a little seamless. Don't worry, we're gonna put our tail there and that's gonna hide that seam as well. So here we're going to do, we're now after doing that, that was round 12 essentially. And we're gonna go on to row 13 and go from 36 stitches and we're gonna go down to 30. And the way that we do that is we do the inverse of what we did when we were doing our increases essentially. So here we want these 36 stitches to get down to 30. So how we're gonna do that, we have our first stitch done. We're gonna single crochet one, two, decrease. And the way that I decrease is I actually do that. I'll show that one more time. I put my hook inside the first stitch that I wanna decrease and then the second. So I kinda of just whoop right down and get that second loop. And then I single crochet it like it's one loop. And that makes those two stitches come together. It's seamless and it looks beautiful. And I also still stagger because it also hides those holes better as well. And then one, two. Let's try one more time. One, two, do do, decrease. One, Two, and I'm gonna do that until I get all the way to the end. There's still four stitches between each decrease and it makes it nice and seamless. One, two, whoop, decrease. I don't know why I need to make the sound effects, but you know, they're necessary. And one, two. I'm gonna do that all the way for three more repetitions. We're now on the last stitch. 
on that repetition. And what I like to do here is I like to actually take this tail, I usually leave a decently long one, and I like to pull it through and forward to mark where my stitches and where my rows should end. We're going from 30 stitches down to 24. And the way that we do that, essentially, is we're going to go into this first stitch here. It's going to be a little bit tighter. And single crochet one, two, three, and then decrease the fourth and fifth stitch together. One, two, three, four, and five. And we continue this for four more repetitions to make a total of six again. So that was row 14 and now we're on row 15. We have 24 stitches and we want to get down to 18. And the way that we do that is we're gonna stagger our decreases. Again, this kind of just offsets them and makes it so they're not as obvious. And we're going to single crochet one, decrease two together, single crochet one, single crochet one, decrease, single crochet one the entire way around one we're gonna move our tail along just like before and what I like to do here is we are at the 18 stitch mark we are going on to row 16 we only have two more rounds left to finish this off for just the shell and the belly and I'm gonna go stuff this real quick and then we're gonna finish off row 16 and I'll be right back all right so we are mostly all stuffed I am gonna need to stuff more after this uh, round 16 before we close up in 17, but essentially what we're going to do now is we're going to single crochet one And not split our yarn hopefully, you know, that's the preference So single crochet one and then decrease every single Other stitch essentially. I'm going to tuck that in a little bit. There you go. So single crochet one Decrease I think my cat's trying to break into my Studio, but okay. Single crochet one, decrease. She does not like closed doors. One, decrease. One, whoop, there we go. Decrease. I think we have one more repetition. Yup, there we go. One, and decrease. I'm gonna pull that out. I'm gonna finish stuffing because it's not quite done yet. I pull little pieces out and then kind of just stuff it to the best of my ability. This should be done pretty quickly though. I hate stuffing. It's my least favorite part of amigurumi. I love the kind of trance that you can get into when you're crocheting and you just keep crocheting the same stitch over and over again. So there we go. That's gonna about do it. Good. All right. So now what we're going to do is we have 12 stitches at the end of row 16. We are now on row 17 and we're going to decrease every single stitch. So here and here, we're going to tighten up where we were and bring here and here. There we go. Not split the yarn and decrease here and here, decrease, here and here, decrease, and on the last two stitches we're going to do something a little bit different here and here, decrease here and here, decrease, that was our fifth repetition, so we're not going to do the same thing on the sixth repetition here. You can, it's fine, you can slip stitch off there. What I like to do though is I like to just skip this stitch and go into the last and slip stitch off. So I'm gonna find scissors somewhere and I'll show you how we close up. Close up, no, I don't want those scissors. Those are not quite, well, will they work? It's not dumb if it works. There we go, that'll work. All right, so 
We're gonna pull that tail through. I do need actual real scissors. There we go. And cut him off. I don't know why I anthropomorphized it, but you know, this is amigurumi. We're gonna take our darning needle and we still have a big gaping hole here. And what I like to do in order to close that up is we're gonna take our darning needle and we're gonna go through from the front of the loop towards the center and just pull it through and do that every single stitch. Go across and five and six. And on this last one, I like to just kind of pivot in towards the center, but out of the side wherever I can. Try to get a little bit further. There you go. Pull and tug and that will zip right up. And I also like to try to take this tail and get a little bit further away from where it was. That way if it does unravel for whatever reason, it's a little bit further out and it gives you a little bit more leg way to play with. So we're going to cut that tail and hopefully not cut our actual stitch. No, it needs to just wiggle in. You can always just kind of wiggle your amigurumi. So that is our shell and that is our belly. Next up, we are going to work on the tail and I'll show you how I attach that real quick. So from here on out, we're going to use this bright citrus color. I think that'll really pop against this turquoise color. I think it's super pretty. And the tail is super duper easy, like so easy. But one thing that I will say is I like to leave a nice eight to 10 inch long tail for my uh, front and for my back. That's how I sew them on. That's how I sew on the tail. So, oh, that's actually marbling. There we go. We're going to put a slip knot onto our crochet hook and we're going to chain four. So one, two, three, four. We're gonna skip the first chain from our hook and go into the second one and single crochet one on to the next chain and single crochet one and then in this last chain we're going to slip stitch off i know crazy so we're going to make our tails kind of the same length both of them very long and i'm going to just pull that off we're going to get our darning needle out this is just a little simple tail and with our darning needle i like to attach this so that it is facing upward up by where you had your start originally. I think this masks it fairly well and also hides that little kind of garish uneven spot. I'm gonna grab the right leg, so the one where we just slip stitched off, and we're gonna put our darning needle on. And the way that I attach this is I'm going to kind of have it facing this way. I like to go with my darning needle underneath that nice little double kind of where you slip stitched on and single crocheted. We're going to try to go underneath like that. I don't know why it's being difficult. There we go. Mostly, maybe not. I think the stuffing's just weird there. There we are. I go from the right to the left. Then I don't pull too tight. I'm gonna grab my other leg and then I do the same thing but kind of the inverse where I go from where that just came out and I go from where it just came in on the opposite side. Pull, pull my darning needle over there. And then I'm going to double knot this. I'm just gonna go like this and tug it. There's probably a lot of different ways that you can add this, but this is the way that I'm adding it. And I double knot it to give it a little bit more of a longevity that it'll stay there. And then I take my darning needle again with each of these right here, and I'm going to feed this through and up the side. Like, oh, not through stuffing. Come on, go back in. get in there. Alright, so we're gonna then go through a second angle. No more stuffing. 
and like that with our tail. I like to hide it that way. Same thing with the other side. Little butt, little tail, I love it. It's super duper cute and I think it hides it fairly well. And then you cut your tails and now we're going to work on the head. And if you find that it's not going in, you can just kind of keep wiggling your amigurumi until the tail goes in and vanishes inside. That way you're not having all these issues. Okay, so for the head, we're going to continue on with our bright citrus. This is the main color that I'm using for this turtle. And for the head, essentially, I'm going to stop hitting my scissors so it stops making a clingy noise. But for rows one, two, and three, we are going to just get up to our 18 stitches just like we did on our shell. Except we're not going to go past that as far as our increasing. So for round one, we made our ring and put six single crochet inside. Again, just like our little shell here. Then we increased every single stitch on row two, getting us to 12. And then single crochet one, increase. So every other increase to get us to 18. So for rows four through seven, we are going to just single crochet around. I'm going to go do that off camera. Again, it's a little tedious just to see me single crochet around um, all these 18 stitches four times. So for rows four through seven, four, five, six, seven, we are going to just single crochet around for four rounds. And then I'll be back and show you how we add the eyes, how I stuff, and then how I decrease off. I do hot glue these on. I'm probably going to do that off camera, but here we are. So we're just going to single crochet around for four rounds. And when I'm done with that, I will be right back and show you how to do the cute little eyes. Be right back. All right. So now we have gone around our four rounds. And at this point, I like to add the eyes that are over here. And here, I like to move forward my tail just a little bit just to go along now that I've done my four rounds I'm gonna move my tail just to kind of mark where I need to finish up over there but I like to also look for my increases on my last increase round so that's one and that'll work so I'm gonna stick one of my eyes in that increase then I kind of follow it with the next increase so my increases might take me a second there's another one right here but generally, I try to get them so that they are kind of halfway across from one another. And I put them in an increase round because they're bigger rounds, honestly. I flip my work inside out. And then I'm going to add the backs to them because I'm happy with how that looks. Snapping on those backs. And then snap on this one. They're always so difficult. The ones at Hobby Lobby and uh, that you can get at craft stores that have the really strong backs, I'm sure. They're sturdier, but honestly, I have the hardest time trying to get those on. I like to, with the head, take a small little bit of polyfill and kind of try to shove it between those two eyes. Otherwise, I can sometimes miss stuffing in that spot and it just won't pop out like I want it to. So I always kind of add a little bit right there. So here, we are now going to work on some decreasing. We are now in round eight and we're going to single crochet one. Oh, we have 18 stitches and we are going to single crochet one and then decrease in our invisible decrease the next two stitches together. We're gonna be going from 18 stitches down to 12. Decrease one and this is a repetition of six times decrease one decrease one e, there we go decrease and our last repetition one decrease we are now 
going to be popping over to round nine after we stuff. I'm down to 12 stitches. And here, I know I have 12 stitches and I know I'm going to be decreasing for the rest of the rounds. And we're gonna be doing decreasing similar to how we did it over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take that tail and shove it all back in there. And I'm going to stuff the head. I'm trying not to stuff it too, too thick, but I do want it to be just firm enough that it's not gonna cave in on itself essentially. So not too firm, but not too loose either. Otherwise you end up with overstuffing and it's just a problem. It doesn't look good. And now I need to go a little bit on that side. Just a little bit. I feel like I don't need that much. There we go. I think that will do. Actually, I do need that much. I lied. There we go. I could have just, you know, figured it out. There we are. And so here we are now on our last 12 stitches and we're going to do the same thing that we did for the belly with our decreasing. We're going to decrease every single stitch. So these two go together and these two go together and then these two go together. This is our third repetition, fourth repetition, fifth repetition. Now this is our last repetition. We have seven stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we want this to be down to six. I'm gonna do the same thing that I did on the belly where I skip this one stitch and then slip stitch off into the next. We are then gonna chop. Not too, too long. Oh, come on. These are very dull scissors apparently. All right, we're gonna grab our darning needle, pull that through. I'm gonna do the same thing that I did on the tummy. The fins are actually fairly easy after this, but I usually hot glue my heads on, so I'm probably going to do that after the fins, because I like to add the fins and then center the head in the center just to make sure that it gets centered essentially. So two, I hope that makes sense, three, same thing as the belly, four, and final, go through that top again. Go kind of through as far away as you can, pull and tug. And then I try to take this and I go back in and I try to go as far away from the base as I can, like so. Try to give a lot of this tail to be on the inside. Squish, squish, squish. That's gonna be our little head. You can add a little white line of either fabric paint or just a little bit of white yarn if you would like this effect on the eye. It's not super necessary, but I do think it's cute, so I probably will add one. And that I just embroider on the same as I did in my strawberry whale video. So again, we're gonna set this aside for right now and we're gonna go on to the fins. And then once the fins are done and added on here, then I will be hot gluing this to the front so that I can make it most level with the tail and everything else. On to the fins. Okay, so for the fins, I've already have three out of the four done and I'm just gonna kinda do a brief explanation because it's actually fairly easy to crochet the parts. The harder part is getting them sewn up sideways the way that you want them to be and also sewing them along the belly in the proper location and I'm gonna go over that a little bit more than what the actual pattern states. So the belly, I'm gonna put him like right there so you can see his little belly. I have two different sets of fins and essentially I am gonna crochet one of them so you can see the difference between the small fin, which is the back fin and the front fin, which is the bigger fin. So the, let me actually reverse those over here. This is the front fin and this is the back fin. The front fin essentially has the same increases as the head. So you start with a six single crochet inside of a ring go up to 12 and then you get up to 18. And instead of going around for four times, you just go around once. And then you basically sew across, which I will show you how I do for these. And that is how you do the larger front fin. However, the back fin, it's the same premise, but instead of doing a six single crochet when you start, you're doing the same number of rows, but you do a single crochet with your magic ring go back inside, you put five instead of six. So two, three, four, and five. 
then you repeat the same general things. So you increase and then single crochet one, increase and then single crochet around. So again, you go from five to 10 to 15, essentially. You do the same as you would for the head and for the other uh, fins as well. You just do it with a, with a repetition of five instead of six this time for the little back fins and that's how they're a little bit smaller but still round. So I'm going to again increase this next stitch and I'll show you what the little base of it looks like before I single crochet around and then I'll show you how we sew across it so that it's flat instead of you know round like we usually would when it is in the round. So another increase and then you'll get yourself up to 10 stitches. I think this is our last repetition. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I believe. Let me double count that to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now at the start of round three, we're going to single crochet one, increase all the way around, taking those ten stitches up to 15 essentially because you're only increasing five stitches every single round it's the same premise as the six stitch ones it's just less stitches in the start which gives you less repetitions of it essentially so one two one and increase And I believe this is our last repetition. One, two. Yes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Perfect. So here, again, I'm gonna move my tail forward just so that I can see where my stitches end. I'm gonna single crochet around once to make those stitches look nice and flat, and that's 15 stitches total. So two, I'm gonna fast forward through this. It's just single crocheting around those 15 stitches. And this is our last stitch of that row. I like to then slip stitch into the first stitch of what would be round four, but that's not. I'm just gonna slip stitch off, cut a decently long tail. I always cut too long of a tail rather than too short of a tail. Oh, these scissors are dull, what is going on? There we go. I need my little sewing scissors because I can't find any of them. They always are so, they're sharp, but they're so dang small. I lose them. So, and it's always easier to get it so that it's like higher up because I'm less likely to, you know, cut on that area. All right. So here I'm going to show you how I take this open kind of random little piece and how I turn it into essentially this closed across piece. So what I do is take my darning needle and I'm going to take it and essentially shove it into this stitch right here and then go across right here. This is where I slip stitched and I'm just trying to go across so that it makes sense. Now that I'm over here, I'm not going to pull too tight because I don't want to warp that. I am however going to go into the stitch next to that stitch and go across so that it's just across and not pull in my tail from you. It's not your time yet. All right, then go over here. My cat is mad and wants in the room even though she wanted out of it just two minutes ago. Then again, across, go adjacent and across, adjacent and across. Adjacent and across. And then you have these last two right here. And it's kind of wiggly. Try to get it in there. And then I kind of give it a small snug, just a little bit to pull that in. And what I do from here is go back across. Because right here, it looks kind of warbly. And I find that if I go across one more time, it just looks a little bit better. It's just a little bit better. Looks a little bit more smooth and even and it just makes it look better. Makes it look smoother. So I'm gonna go back across and across and across. 
and across. And then I'm going to go back inside that first little wobble right there. That little stitch. I know it's not a technical term. And I'm going to do the same for this other piece right here. And then when I come back, I'm actually going to attach this and this side. And I'm going to show you how I attach it on the other side. I'll be right back as soon as I get that Done. Okay, so basically I added on these two fins on the right and we're going to mirror it on the left. We start with our smaller fin. I know it's so hard to tell because they do look very close in size, but this one's the smaller one. It doesn't super duper matter, but I do think it makes a big difference in the long run. And here what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that they're facing the direction that we want them to do. I have sewn these on backwards before and that is a pain in the butt. So make sure that they are facing the right way. I like to kind of press it against the lip of the shell right here. And what I'm going to do essentially is count back seven from the tail for this smaller piece here for the back fin and what i'm going to do is i'm going to count one stitch two three four five six and seven and on the seventh stitch i'm going to go underneath like so i'm going to get the scissor out of my way so it's not going to keep ringing and making sounds and then we're going to go up over here on the top of this piece and go in and kind of tug it not too hard shake the camera for good luck as always go underneath the next stitch and we're going to do this across the next four stitches essentially go over go up where it's adjacent on the fin do that try not to hit the camera there we go go into here for the third stitch in the adjacent third fin over here kind of tug I kind of give it a little snip and pull whenever I do that. Not really a snip, more like just a pull. There we go. Go through the fourth stitch and then the adjacent fourth stitch over here. So here at this point, I'm happy. I'm going to tug all of them so that they all kind of pull in. and It looks nice. looks great. We're going to fold it, kind of pull over here, put our darning needle in and go up through the blue and try not to catch stuffing if you can but that's what's happening this round apparently then you're gonna go up and basically do the same thing but through these little blue stitches on the opposite side essentially so we're gonna grab that try not to grab your tail always and then go through here grab that and adjacent pull Go through the next one, through that little blue seam right there. Go through the top, kind of snag it up and pull. Go through, go up, and here I'm gonna pull again to make it nice and snug. I then like to go through the little blue stitch right next to where I went over here. Then I'm gonna go through that little top stitch right there that kind of pops up a little bit. And then I'm going to kind of stick it back into the shell and stick my darning needle, not with some stuffing, darn it, holy moly, that was going through, and pull it up and kind of snag, pull, and that is how you add a little bottom. It looks super cute. There we go. That's how you add the little bottom back fin. I think it looks super duper cute with the little tail there. So we're going to snip snip that off now that i've pulled it through it sneaks its way back inside the turtle body which is fine and we're going to do the same general principle with the front one but this time we're going to count back eight so here again we're going to make sure that this is facing the way that i want so we're facing it this way just to make sure that it's going the way that i want we're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's what I did over here. You're roughly going to have between five and six stitches on this side. So I'm going to put my, actually I miscounted again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There we go. Put your darning needle through that part of the stitch. We're going to go along this front and then along the back again. And this time, instead of the four stitches that you're going to go across, you're going to go across five just because you have more stitches on this one and it looks better when you do the five so two go through three try not to split your stitches 
go through the adjacent one. Four. Go through the adjacent one. Kind of snag and pull as you go. And five. Eek. There we go. Go through the adjacent one. Don't split your yarn as best as you can. There we go. Pull. Snug. Flip. Pull your lip down a little bit. Go through like that so that it's going through the blue stitch part now. Kind of pull your yarn that way. Go adjacent across like that. Don't grab your tail or your back fin at this point. Pull, snug it up a little bit. Go through that little blue stitch right there. Pull. Go up into the adjacent one. Go through the blue. Up in the adjacent one. Up through the blue. These are all kind of too many stitches, so I'm going to pull that tight so that it can actually like kind of pull in. Go through the adjacent one. Go through the blue adjacent and then you have your final kind of popping up piece right here we're gonna take it go through grab this little one that's kind of popping up go back inside the stitch that it came from and then do the same thing where you go through and then here I like to try to like tug but not so tight that it's gonna rip it or anything and this little lip kind of hides all manner of sin so we're just gonna have that hide there and i'm gonna go cut off my tails and i'm gonna go hot glue on this head it's super easy it's super quick i literally am just going to take this head find my center so my head goes right here i'm gonna take some hot glue by about only across i'm gonna hot glue where the final six stitches were and i'm gonna pop it right there and then i kind of press his head like once while it's hot gluing against something so and usually press between two things that way you can't see the hot glue it kind of congeals and you can't even see it if you want to sew it on you're free to do that i just don't because i'm lazy when it comes to my amigurumi and honestly i think this looks just fine if you do it right it like will just congeal and it won't come off so i'm gonna go do that i don't think i'm gonna add the whites of the eyes on this one i think he's already like way too bright as it is so i'm gonna go do that chop off some tails and i'll be right back so this is what you get at the very end once your head is attached i think this one attached really well which i'm really pleased about and i'm super excited with how this overall whale turned out all the different color variations you can do on this are super duper cute and i think that i'm going to be doing some more of my fruit whale series and making also the fruit turtle series i think it's going to be super duper cute so stay tuned for that let me know down below what you would like to see as far as like fruit <laughs> in the whale and turtle series i think they're super duper cute and i have a whole slew of them that i'm going to be making and i showed some of them in the beginning of this video but uh be sure to check out the kits if you're interested in the uh, kits that i have on etsy on how to make these as well it comes with the pattern uh, it comes with everything that you would need in order to crochet one of these some uh i have it so that it's set to um, being cheaper if you already have a crochet hook and that's something that you're interested in so go ahead and look down below in the description if that is something that you are interested in pattern pdf again on ravelry lovecrafts also on kindle links will be all down below uh in progression to when they're done hopefully they'll all be done before i post this video um and thank you for watching this video and before we go i'd like to give a shout out to my patreon supporters thank you so much for your support we wouldn't be able to grow as much as a channel so thank you for your generous pledges um if you're interested in becoming a patron of our channel go to patreon.com knit and you can see the different rewards we have for our patrons there um also thanks again for watching be sure to like subscribe and hit the bell before you leave if you would like to see more videos like this we have a discord link as well if you're interested in that again links for everything are down below all right until next time guys bye